Hey, good morning everyone. It's TrackMan44 here. Today we're going to do a little sheet metal project, and not by middle, little, I mean little. Uh, this thing's only going to be nine and a half inches top to bottom, but it's a little bit on the weird, weird side. It's got to go all four different directions at the same time. So it's just got a slight taper to the outside two directions, then only one inch offset, kind of leaning like a parallelogram the other direction. It's not going to be real comprehensive. A buddy of mine already ripped everything out, so I get over there and of course, it's not quite like I would have disassembled it. it would have been a little bit different, uh, but you know it is what it is. You got to work with what you're what you're given. So I did not get to film the, the tear out, but a little bit of luck goes with us. I'll be able to film installing it. Now this thing's only going to start off at 16 and 5 8 and it's only going to flare out to 17. So that's just a minimal amount of of flare. Now I'm just using scrap metal, so or just small pieces of leftover material. So just pick your spot out here somewhere in the middle of this. It doesn't really matter where we're at as long as it's about in the middle. Put your center line mark. I like to mark it all the way to the top, but I got uh, 16 and 5 eighths, which is going to be 8 and 5 sixteenths to either side. We're going to go 8 and 5 sixteenths this side. We're going to go 8 and 5 sixteenths to that side. Then we're going to double check and make sure we got 16 and 5 eighths because that's exactly what we have, 16 and 5 eighths. On this same, we're going to flare out to 17 inches. So we have to get the, the actual height. So that's got to be nine and a half inches in addition to the flange. So we go off of the flange and go and put our nine and a half inch mark. Nine and a half inch. Now we're going to come one inch back off of that because that's going to be down in an S or it'll form a drive. So nine and a half minus one. So we got those laid out. That'll be the cut length. This will be the line, the one inch down where you form your your uh, S or your drive cut will be the uh, the part that you actually measure too. So half of 17 is eight and a half. So you can go eight and a half here on the one inch line down, eight and a half here, double check, 17 all the way across. Connect those dots and you'll see it's not very much of a flare at all. Then off of that angle, that slightly angled line, we measure the one inch for the Pittsburgh because I want that Pittsburgh lock on the front and the rear piece. Now I positioned the furnace to where I'd have at least one line as close as possible, but I could not get it straight up and down because the return air was too far off from plumb by the time I had lined up the one side that I wanted to line up. Cut that out. You can see it's barely off square, just a slight flare to the outside. It's going to be exactly the same for the front and for the back. So I'm just going to go ahead and flip this over and trace this out on the back. Okay, now I did not lay this out with the magic marker, but I went back over top of my scribe lines with the magic marker so you can actually see the layout and see the, the corner notches. If you notice, these are a 3 8 flange down here. These newer furnaces, they're getting to where they don't uh, they don't have a half inch lip on some of the manufacturers and they gave you these stupid little things that you have to screw on the inside of your uh, your furnace or, or your coil box and it only allows you a 3 8 inch of flange on the outside. So this particular one here is only going to have a 3 8 inch flange. It's really a pain in the rear. But hopefully you can see the notch lines now a little better. I'll go ahead and notch this out. That's ready for the lock farmer machine here and here. I'm going to put just a slight cross break on it even though it's not necessary. Okay, I got these small 3 8 flanges bent on them. Now it's exceptionally stiff and I put a very slight cross break in it. And remember I described this as having to be a, a to become a parallelogram so when you bend your flanges you have to have a the same tilt going opposite directions on the front and the rear so that it'll tilt back and that'll be nominally adjustable as you're installing you know in the field. Because this is just a slight change there's not going to be much growth 
in the length of the pieces that we have to measure now. But you can see if this was a, a really wide flare, you can see that the distance going out is much longer than it is up in this short distance. So this is not going to grow all that much. So just go ahead and measure at your one inch mark down to your the inside of your flange and it's going to be almost exactly what the cut size was which is nine and a half inches so we have eight and a half plus one that's your nine and a half plus the three quarters or the two the double three eighths flange so that's going to be nine and a half and three quarters which is uh, ten and a quarter so we'll start off by laying out the uh, the three three eighths flanges I really dislike three eighths flanges this is a 3 8 notch here, and I use them so infrequently, but I, I put it, when you use a 3 8 notch, you almost always use a 3 quarter inch notch for the second. So that's why I put the 3 8 notch right there by the 3 quarter inch notch. But we know we're going to be 8 and a half inches above the hem line. So we can come up here 8 and 1 half inches off of the 3 quarter inch line. Plus the 1 inch for the part that's going to actually become the drive. 8 and 1 half plus one inch. The total length is ten and a quarter. Now these sides are going to be a little bit different. We know it starts out at 20 inches here, goes flares out to 21 up top, but the back side has to come in an inch and a half and the front side has to run wild out to that 21 inch mark from the inch and a half inch in. So what we'll do, grab a large piece of, uh, of material and put you a, just pick a spot out in the middle and put you a mark and then a second mark the same distance in so that you can get a center line established. And again, I'm not laying out with the magic marker, I'm just going over the layout for your benefit. And we'll do our double 3 8 inch hem. So here's our center line. Come back off of that center line 10 inches. It's going to be 20 inches in width at the bottom, so 10 inches off of that gives us a mark over here. That should verify 20 inch mark right there. You go up for what your height is, which is going to be eight and a half inches off of the three quarter inch double hem line. So you can put your eight and a half inch mark there, an eight and a half inch mark here. Then you can go ahead and draw that straight line. That's gonna be your drive, where your drive cab will be bent. Then we add one inch to that on both ends and add that one inch to it. Now we got 10 inches here. We want it to come in an inch and a half. So we go up here at 10 inches, take an inch and a half off of it. So that makes it eight and a half inches. That's going to give us our one and a half inch in tilt. Now from that point right there on the one inch down line, you can look right out here and you can put a mark at 21 inches. So now you can connect these two dots from your three quarter double hem up to your drive, your drive line that's your angle for the back end of the furnace then up here we got your 21 inch mark here we got our 20 inch mark here connect those two dots then you can go ahead and add a quarter of an inch on a quarter inch you can just kind of estimate and I do that consistently because who can't estimate a quarter of an inch and again that's nominal because it's got to go inside the Pittsburgh lock so if you get a you know 3 16 7 inch who cares the Pittsburgh is gonna lock it anyway add a quarter of an inch on this other side and now you can see the tilt of the fitting. See how that tilts in? One and a half inches off of the bottom portion. 20 inch carries over here for the bottom of the plenum. 21 inches carries all the way over here on the height mark to here. And then just run it wild out to there. So that's your front angle right here. So let's cut that real quick. Rear of the furnace, front of the furnace, this is on the return air side and it's going to match up to the end pieces we've already fabricated. And you can see our notches right here. I'll go ahead and notch that out. This is identical to mirror image both sides. So I turn this upside down, trace this out on the other side mark it on the inside and cut it and we have a left and a, and a right side. Here the two halves cross broke and folded up. This is the rear of the furnace. This is up here is the front of the furnace. 
and you can see now your exaggerated angles 20 inch by 21 inch and a half off and then the 21 running wild so let's go ahead and set it together real quick again this will be a field assembly because we want that variable because sometimes on the job site things just don't give it for you let me just stick these together real quick Sometimes you have to get a little aggressive with them. Kind of bounce that Pittsburgh open a little bit. Now don't be concerned if it doesn't look perfect because it's not assembled. It's not knocked all together yet. But you can see how it's going to uh, how it's going to function. So now I got to go ahead and bend the drive tabs on the uh, sides on this particular one here. Because I can drive them from the front and the back on this one, but I can't go side to side the sharp dimension like I would normally want to do. So here it is. It's not latched together. This will be field assembled, but you can see the, the slight angle both directions. Uh, 21 inch this direction here. 21, 20 at the bottom. One and a half inches in from there. And then the one and a half offset plus the one inch change in dimension coming to the front. And as you can see from the front, it's just got ever so slight a widening, roughly a quarter to five sixteenths of an inch widening in both directions to the outside. So it's ready to go to the job site. Like I said before, and I say all the time, most of the time on plenum adaptions, I always let them go uh, disassembled until I get to the job site because uh, so many things are, are determine how it is installed and if you assemble it here you have from a fixed point to a fixed point to go to so it makes it much more difficult leave it disassembled go to the job site put two sides together you know two halves together uh, put piece one piece at a time together uh, make a horseshoe and put the fourth piece in all by itself any combination of those will work uh, but it depends on the particular job sometimes you're S's and drives have to go on the short way versus long way, long way versus the short way. That's all determined by what you have to work with on site. And virtually every site is different. That's the end of this one. Like I said, quick and simple. The return air is going to match up real good. I do have to cut a little bit off of the return air because we're setting it up on bricks. So i got to take a little bit off of that. And i got to work a little magic with the existing return air filter rack. But that will be a different video. So glad you all stuck around. If you did anyway, this is Trackman44 and I am out of here guys.